Hi everyone, welcome to lesson one of the Twilight Dreaming Quilt. Today's lesson is all about simple, fusible machine applique. It's going to be lots of fun. And don't forget that these videos are always going to be here so you can come back and have a look in, just in case you miss something. So let's get going. Cutting out the background fabric. So we're going to make two quilts. Our first one has the dark background and then the one we're making our sample is going to have a pink background. To cut out your background fabric, you're going to need a rotary cutter, ruler and cutting mat. Okay, so regardless of whether you're using the um, narrower fabric, which was the 110 42 inch wide, or you had the 147, which I think is about 57 inches wide, what you want to do is you want to start with your fabric folded with your opposite selvages together like that. Now a lot of times when you buy a patchwork fabric it comes off the bolt already folded so that's what we want to have. You want to have it lined up on the table with the folded edge closest to you and now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this if you're right-handed but if you're left-handed you're just going to reverse what, um, what I'm showing here. So to get a nice square edge what we're going to do first of all is we're going to make sure that our folded edge is running along a line on our cutting mat like that. Um, this cutting mat's not quite wide so I'm just going to bring that down a little bit and then we're going to put our ruler on and we're just going to trim off the edge first of all. So if you line up a line on your ruler and you make it level with the folded edge of your fabric making sure that's nice and straight. All you have to do using your rotary cutter is just cut along like that, first of all. Now the next step is to cut our 18 inch block. We're going to turn the ruler like this. There's our 18 inches, so number one, and there's our 18. We're going to put the 18 inch mark of our ruler, and we're going to put that on the edge that we've just cut, and then we're going to mark 18 inches like that. We'll then slide across and we're going to mark that again. So there's our 18 inch on our trimmed edge and there's making our mark there like that. Next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to slide that across so that I can easily cut my fabric. And then I'm going to cut, I'm just going to line the ruler up there so it's lining up on my two marks like that. My straight edge is still running along the folded edge and then I'm going to cut on that line there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my fabric around and I'm going to have the selvage edge on the right hand side and then I'm going to line up the ruler. It's always good to work with lines on the board and your ruler so there's my line there and then I'm just going to line up my straight edge on the line and then I'm going to use my ruler and I'm just going to line it up, any line lined up on the straight edge of the fabric like that. I'm going to trim off the selvage and then the next thing I'm going to do from there is I'm going to mark across my 18 inches again. So I'm going to have my 18 inch line on the edge of the fabric here. I'm going to make a mark here. I'm going to make a mark here slide it across a little bit and then I'm going to connect those two lines and I'm going to cut there like that and then what you'll see is I'm going to now have two 18 inch squares. So that's all I want you to cut for the time being. If you were using the wider fabric it would be the same kind of thing but what would happen is you're going to get three 18 inch squares out of the width of your fabric. So you would cut your first two and then you would end up having um, some fabric left over on the edge which you'll be able to open out and um, cut that to an 18 inch square. So that's our background fabric ready to go. Now that's going to give us two 18 inch squares, one for block one, one for block two. And another question people always ask is when you're using a plain fabric, what is the right and wrong side of the fabric? Sometimes it's just the side of the fabric that looks the nicest. Sometimes you can't tell, so I wouldn't worry about it. But if you do have your selvage on the edge and it's got the little pin dots, the side where the pin dots are raised when you run your finger along the selvage, that is the right side of the fabric. So the next step is to print out your pattern sheets. There are six A4 sheets. 
The first four are the design placement and the last two are your applique shapes. So for those of you that are using printer friendly fusible web, you can actually print those applique shapes straight out onto your fusible web. Okay, so here are your pattern pages. Um, there's our six pieces there. So we've got our four, first four, which are the design placement, and then we've got our applique shapes over here. First of all, we're going to join these four pages together to make the design placement. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to cut on any lines where it says cut along this line. So I like to use the rotary cutter and I'll just use, I have a secondary rotary cutter that I use for paper. So I'm just going to cut there. just by lining that up there like that. Use some sticky tape to hold that together and I can next of all join together the top two pieces of the pattern that goes together like that lining up the bird there with his wings And then we're going to bring the bottom onto the top and overlapping that like that. Just making sure that everything's lining up nicely and using some more sticky tape. So that's our full design placement there. So now that we have our pattern sheet all as one, we need to transfer that design onto our background fabric. So to do that, first of all, to make sure that we're going to get it nice and centered, first of all, we're going to fold our fabric in half lengthwise and just pressing finger crease like that. And then we're going to fold it in the other way like that. Pressing our finger crease. Now something about fabric is um, very important is the grain line of your fabric. So the grain line that runs down that's parallel with the selvage, if you have a little pull on that you'll see that that's very secure and it doesn't stretch. The grain line that runs across is quite stretchy. So let's try and get the grain line that's got no stretch running down our pattern and if we keep them all the same like that it's going to make it really nice and easy when we go to join the quilt together. So I'm lining up the center creases with the center line of the pattern. Bring that down a little bit there. And that's quite good there. And that's quite good there like that. So if you're using a light fabric, you'll easily be able to see how you can see the design through it. So what I'm going to do is just pop a couple of pins in around the outside edge, stop it from moving. And then to trace, you need to have a fabric marker that can be easily erased from the fabric. So I'm using a Soline Trio pencil here and this has got three colours in it. So it's got a black, a pink and a white. So it just depends when you turn what colour comes out. So the black colour is like a grey. So if you're using a pencil like this, just make sure that you only ever press lightly like that and then you'll be able to rub it out with the little rubber that's on the end there. Um, another tip is to make sure that you don't have any stray pencil lines, just trace slightly inside the line and then away you go. You're just going to trace, lightly trace the design on. So with our quilt here we've used a dark background and our sample quilt we're using a light background just so that we can show you all of the applique and quilting detail. So to trace your design onto your background fabric if it's dark you're going to need to use either a light box but if you don't have a light box it doesn't matter you can tape the design up to a window. So to trace onto a dark background you're going to need a light fabric marker. I'm using a Soline Trio pencil so you can have the different colours and this time I'm using a pink. It's a nice fine line, makes it nice and easy to trace.
trays. A couple of tips with applique is that there are many different brands of fusible web paper, so make sure that you use the temperature that they recommend. Um, if there's no um, instructions on the pack, just test some pieces before you get started. Also, don't use steam. And one other tip I've got to show you is how you can easily remove the backing paper from the applique shapes. If you have trouble removing the backing paper from your applique shape, use a pin, score the back like that, and then that's going to be a little cut in the paper, being careful not to damage the fabric of course, and then that just helps you to peel away the paper backing. Okay, so I've chosen some fabrics out of our stash. There's actually 10 different colours in block one and there is a colour guide on the bottom of page three. So if you want to choose your own colours, just substitute your colours for our colours here in the same um, amount of pieces and you're going to end up with a really nice balanced block. Okay, so let's start tracing the pieces on the fusible web now. So your applique shapes are on page 5 and page 6 of the pattern and your colour guide is here, like I mentioned before, so you can see what colours go there. So I suggest just drawing an outline around your pieces. So these are all here, the MB, medium blue, so I'm going to draw a circle around those to group those. I've got all of my light pinks here and here I've got my dark pinks here. So the next step is to take your fusible web paper. So you can see this is our fusible web. We're using a product called Applifix. It's smooth on one side and you can see you've got your glue on the other side there. So we're just going to pop that straight down onto the paper like that and we can see through it. And using a 2B lead pencil, we're gonna trace all of these shapes out exactly on the marked line. Okay, so here are my pieces traced onto the fusible web. Don't forget to number all of your pieces and also add the initials for the colours. And I've also drawn that line around the outside edge for the groups of colours. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to roughly cut out around the edge. So this is where I'm using paper scissors to cut around the edge. And of course we use paper scissors because we don't want to um, blunten our good scissors. Now the next step is to iron your fusible web onto the wrong side of your fabric. So I'm using a batik fabric, sometimes they're difficult to see the front and back, so just choose the colour that you think is probably the nicest. I'm going to keep that one as the right size. Now the other thing that you can do is you can cut the pieces out and you can fussy cut them, position them where you want them to go, or I'm just going to put my piece on like that. So I've got the rough side going towards the wrong side of the fabric and I'm going to iron that on just about 30 seconds with the iron on the cotton setting, no steam. That's going to fuse those pieces on like that. And then the next step is I'm going to start cutting out my shapes. So I'm going to use some nice little applique scissors. They're nice and sharp. That helps me to get some nice shapes around the outside edge. So I just like to cut around the edge first and then I start cutting out. Okay, so the next step now is to use your pattern sheet as a guide, so your design placement, and we need to remove the fusible web, so the paper backing away from the shapes. So just getting on the edge there like that. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to remove, and I'm just gonna check and see which one this is. So this is medium blue four. We're going to put that one there. And we're ironing that in place, like that. You can see that's all nice and fused down. So, just continue on.
So let's talk about the kinds of threads, needle and the kind of foot that we're going to use for machine applique. To stitch around the edge of your applique shapes you can use either a rayon machine embroidery thread or you can use a cotton thread. Just make sure that you don't use anything that's too thick so we just want either a 50 or a 60 weight. In the bobbin it's nice to use a bobbin fill so bobbin fill is a nice fine thread. If you can't get bobbin fill just use either rosant thread and of course if you're using a dark background use a dark coloured bobbin fill and if you're using a light background you could just use a, a white bobbin fill. The kind of needle that you want to use when doing machine applique is a size 75 machine embroidery needle. Now if you can't get one of those um, just use a size 70 universal needle. A size 70 is a fine needle so when we're doing lots of stitching around the edge we don't want to be leaving big holes in the applique pieces so just a fine needle. So this is an open toe foot. This is what I suggested in the requirements list and this is going to provide clear vision when you're stitching around the edge of your shapes. Another thing about your open toe foot is that if you were to look on the back you can see that there's a little groove underneath and that helps you to easily glide over the top of your applique stitches and it also prevents your stitches from bunching up. Okay, so now we're going to practice on our little heart shape here. So when we go to do our zigzag, first of all we want our needle to go into just on the outside edge of the applique shape, just like that. So we don't actually want to be in the applique shape, we're just next to it. And then when we start sewing you'll see that one stitch will go in and one stitch will go out. So the outside stitch is on the just on the outside edge of the applique shape. So we're stitching along. Now at this point in time I feel like I want to turn a little bit so I've got a pivot function on my sewing machine which is set at the moment so it raises the foot a little bit but I'm just going to pivot like that. If you don't have a pivot function some of you may have a knee lift, if not just use your little foot control foot lever at the back there. So we're on an outside curve so we're going to every time we want to um, pivot we've got to stop with the needle on the outside edge. Okay, so as we start approaching our outside corner, remember the needle has to stop on the outside edge. So we're going to stitch all the way along. So on the outside, I mean on the right side. So we go there and we're going to stop exactly there. We're going to turn like that and then um, I'm just putting my foot down for a moment so that I can lift my needle and then I just want to shift forward a little bit so that this time when I put my needle down it actually is stitching into the satin stitch itself not stitching on the outside and then it's coming across like that and away we go so we start stitching along our inside curve so now every time I feel like I need to pivot I'm going to stop with my needle on the inside edge needle on the inside edge to pivot the other thing you'll notice is where my um, fingers are, so I always say light fingers when you're doing machine applique, not heavy hands because we don't want to be pushing or pulling the work. Just letting the machine take it through at its own pace and that way we'll get a nice even stitch. Um, on to an outside curve now, so every time I want to stop I've got to stop with a needle on the outside edge. This is a bit of a tighter curve here too, so if you've got a tight curve, just turn more pivoting to get a nice shape, nice smooth shape around the edge. So I've chosen this stitch um, here, which is a bit more of a, it's a small zigzag, but it's not quite a satin stitch because I find that um, it's quite easy to do. If you're a beginner, um, make sure that um, you try to use threads that match your fabric as best as possible that way like it hides any little mistakes that you make. Now inside curve I'm going to stitch into the heart itself and I'm actually stopping with my needle on the left side so on the inside of the curve. I'm now going to pivot and once again I'm just popping my foot down and I'm going to lift the needle and I'm just shifting forward slightly and that means that the needle actually goes into kind of like the center of the zigzag not on the outside edge of it. That way you don't end up with a lot of bulk at the corner. So I'm coming around my outside curve, needle on the outside whenever I feel like I need to stop. Like that. And we 
almost finished now, coming to the end. Okay, so now to finish off, what you'll do is uh, you can stitch over the beginning stitches just a little bit and then we're going to um, take our work out so like this pull that out we're going to actually leave leave some decent length threads there and we can see our point just nice and neat not bulky or anything like that we didn't have to do anything fancy to get that point there just um, my little trick there and then you can see the top point there is also quite nice also so that's our satin stitch so the next stitch I'm going to show you is just a basic blanket stitch. There are all different kinds of blanket stitches on your machine. Um, the one that you really want to use is the one that only ever moves forward and to the left and to the right. Some of them like to go backwards, forwards, left, right, backwards, forwards, left, right. You can use those if you want to. I don't really like using that one because I find that um, it, it, you really have to watch where the needle is. I'm going to show you the blanket stitch which I like to use. Um, on my machine here, as I said, it's just a simple moves forward, left and then right. Um, my stitch length this time is going to be a width of 2 and I've got it brought down quite small to 1.4. I'm just going to use a grey rosanth thread and that's quite a fine thread so I'm actually going to use that in the top and I'm also going to use it in the bottom. So blanket stitch is not an exact science. Um, we just have to see where the stitches are going to land and we just kind of fudge accordingly to that. So first of all we want to start with our needle on the outside edge, like that. Pop our thread behind the foot. We're going to leave long threads because we're going to tie those off at the end. And we've got two, two stitches and then we're coming in. And with blanket stitching, every time you go to pivot, it's a little bit different to the zigzag, you always stop and pivot with your needle on the outside edge. So whenever you feel that you need to turn a little bit, just lift the foot up and pivot with the needle in the down position on the outside edge. Okay, so we're approaching the corner. Oh, look where I made it there. So what I'm going to do here, I'm not quite at the corner. So I'm actually going to angle my stitch in and then I'm going to do one more stitch and then I'm going to turn and do one more stitch and angle it there. So my two stitches at the bottom that are coming in are kind of crossing over a little bit. I feel that I need to pivot, so needle on the outside edge. Pivoting again. On tight curves you feel that you need to stop and pivot more often. Um, coming into my corner there, I've done one stitch in and then turning in the other direction. Started off. Looks like we might get one more stitch in there. It's a little bit close to the other one, but that's what I was saying. It's non exact science. I'm just going to um, overlap my stitches on the edge and then I'm just going to finish off from there. Take my work out. And now I'm finishing with some long threads because we, um, I'm going to show you soon how to pull those threads through to the back and tie them off. So that's your blanket stitch applique. For both methods to finish off, what you do is you will pull on your bobbin thread and that's going to bring a loop through and you can pull on that loop there and you'll see you've got your four threads and then you can just tie those, neatly tie those in a little knot together. So there's our front looking nice and neat like that. If say for instance you can't pull that thread through, just get a needle and thread that through. Having said that, if your machine does have like a lovely tie-off function and you trust that, you can easily use the tie-off function on the machine. 
So I've just got a little bit of stitching to finish off now um, on our light background one with the pink. Um, I've just been doing a blanket stitch using a grey outline on all of the pieces there. And I've just got a couple of pieces to finish off now. We finished the applique stitching on our pink background one. By the way, we're going to call this one Dawn Dreaming because this is like our beautiful pink sky and we've got our other one here which has got the dark sky. So we've got Dawn Dreaming and we've got Twilight Dreaming. Now the last thing we're going to do here is the eye. You can have a look on this one here and see we put the eye on so the eye is a little bit small and fiddly but if you really want to do the eye persevere with that it's not too bad and what we did with this one here we just did a little straight stitch around the edge of it and I had just a small stitch length of about two to stitch around that circle if you don't want to go to the trouble and do the eye you can use a little tiny button and you can sew that on there like that but keep in mind if you do have children around make sure that you sew that on nice and securely Okay, so the next thing we're going to go on to is the quilting. Okay, so now it's time for the quilting. So to do the quilting, you're going to need a, an 18 inch square of your backing fabric. You're going to need an 18 inch square of batting. And in the requirements list, I mentioned using a color, a backing fabric that was patterned and kind of like a similar color to the top. The reason for that is when I do the quilting, I'm actually going to use a pink thread. We're going to outline, first of all, around the edge of the applique shapes, and we're going to have, um, I'm just gonna use that pink thread on the back there. And now the next thing I wanted to talk about was the kind of batting to use. So I did mention just use a, a nice flat low lock batting with a scrim. Um, you don't have to have a scrim in your batting, but the scrim actually holds your batting nice and stable. So a batting that's got a scrim is quite stable and is not stretchy and low loft flat and low loft and the reason why we need something flat and low loft is because when we're doing all of our quilting we don't want um, a thick puffy batting that you know puckers everything up in the middle and makes all the edges wavy so that's the secret to quilt as you go just using a nice flat low loft batting so i like to use just cotton batting with a scrim or you can also use um, cotton and bamboo if you like. If you don't have that, um, this is another batting that I quite like to use. This one doesn't have a scrim, but it is the um, double-sided usable cotton batting. That one's also quite nice, but just making sure it's a nice flat low loft batting. Try and choose a batting that um, is going to grip against your fabric rather than slip against your fabric. It's going to make it a lot easier when we're doing the quilting. Okay, so when it comes to cutting out your um, backing square, just you know, follow the same instructions as cutting the top square. And then when it comes to cutting out the batting, it's always a bit of a problem because we've got like a great big piece of batting. So all you have to do is use your um, 18 inch um, backing square and just pop that on top of the batting and then just cut around the edge with scissors or your rotary cutter. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to layer them for quilting. So we're going to take our backing fabric and we're gonna have the wrong side facing up. That one there's the wrong side. The other thing I want to make note of is once again our grain line. So our grain line is the, is the one that doesn't have the stretch in it. So a bit stretchy there. This one here is quite solid. So I know that that is running in the same direction as the selvage. Quite important, something we don't think about, but making sure that our backing and our top layer, we've got the, um, the grain line running in the same direction. Next step from there is we're going to take our batting. Now when it comes to batting, um, you might say, oh, does the scrim go up or down? Well, let's make the scrim go up, like that, just to be on the safe side. 
The screen um, with some battings actually stops the fibres from migrating through to the top layer of the fabric. And then our next one goes on top and we're going to make sure once again, so that's our grain line, it's the solid edge there, that's our stretchy edge so we're making sure that that is running down in the same direction as our backing fabric. So we're just going to put the three layers together there like that. So just so that you know, what's happening is we've got an 18 inch square now with our block, um, that's our quilt sandwich. And then once we've done the quilting and before we join it together, we're actually going to trim it back to 17 inches. So um, it doesn't matter if your edges end up you know, moving or shifting a little bit, but provided you're going to be able to get a 17 inch square when it comes time for trimming. So we're just gonna hold the layers together with some safety pins. So we've just got some small little pins like this and you just want to pop them in around the edge. I find that because we're just working in a small section, you don't need to tape the backing fabric to the table, but if you want to, and if that's, that's something that you're used to doing, like by all means, you can do that. But we're just sort of putting pins all the way around the edge. Just making sure that when they go in, um, we're going to actually have space to be able to stitch around the edge. I would actually say about 20 pins would be um, probably the amount that you would need. And one other thing I just want to mention um, about our using a cotton batting is that it kind of tends to grip onto the fabric. So it's quite good, we're not going to have a lot of movement there. Make sure that you are pinning through all three layers there. So at the machine now and um, I've got my walking foot on, I've got my pink thread on the top, I've got pink thread in the bobbin, I've got my stitch length on three, so just a normal straight stitch. And I just want to show you every machine is a little bit different, so your, your walking foot might look something like this, or there's a banana one there, so something like that. So your walking foot is going to help you to evenly feed the three layers of fabric through as we're doing the quilting stitch. Now a couple of things I'm going to show you while we're at the machine. I'm going to show you how to start off and I'm going to show you how to finish off so that you can end up with a really nice looking quilt on the back here. So nice stitching. So with our dawn dreaming, or oh, sorry this is our twilight dreaming, you can see that um, I've done echo quilting in the um, matching coloured black thread and then I've actually used a black thread on the back which looks quite nice. And I always like to do that because I always find if you've got two different coloured threads and especially a light and a dark one, a lot of times you are going to have tension problems. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to outline stitch around the edge of all of the pieces and we want to stitch nice and close to the edge not stitching on top of our um, applique stitch of course and we want to try and do that um, in one go or without with stopping and starting um, as little time as little times as we can if that makes sense so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to stitch around one piece first of all just to show you how to start and finish Okay, so what you do is hang on to your top thread, put your foot down, and then if you've got a needle down button, we're going to use that. But if not, you're going to turn the wheel so that the needle goes all the way down and then it goes all the way back up again. And as it comes up, it's going to bring the bobbin thread through like that. And then what we're going to do is you can just grab your scissors or an unpicker and we want to just pull that thread through like that. So we've got both our threads on the top. Next thing we want to do is put the needle all the way down and then lift the foot and we want to put the thread behind the foot like that and then we're going to put our foot down. So to start off if you just set your stitch length to um, quite a small stitch length of we're going to go all the way down to say 0.6 and we're going to do just a couple of small stitches. So just stitching in the one spot. So maybe say five or six stitches. And then we're going to go back up to a stitch length of three. Press the wrong one there, sorry, this one. Okay, and then we're just going to stitch nice and closely around the edge. And what that's going to do is that's just going to like outline the shapes and it's going to make them 
just kind of um, just puff up a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. Getting a nice close up there so you can see how I am stitching nice and close around the edge. those two shapes and we're coming back to the start so as we get back to the start um, all you need to do there same thing again put the stitch length all the way down we'll go to 0 0.6 and then we're just going to stitch along and we're now going to do a couple of small stitches like that and then that's pretty much it we're going to stop we're going to lift our foot up, pull that out like that and now because we've done those small stitches you can actually cut those right off so once you've done those small stitches they're not coming undone and so I'm cutting the threads off there and then ready I'm going to flip that over and show you how nice it looks on the back, cut the back thread there and there you go that's our starting and finishing there no unsightly little knots or tension problems there on the back. There we are. So I'll just flip back over. I'm just going to talk about how you're going to do the stitching around the edge. So if you can try to stitch, as I said, um, as long as you can without stopping and starting. So you may even want to, say for instance, start um, here. And then you can come up, down there, around there come back again and then from there you might want to then go around the edge of that wing if you have to go back over something again that's okay go there go there and then just outlining all the shapes you can just kind of blend across there from one shape to another and just keep sewing for as long as you can um, you, you are going to have to stop and start a few times but um, that's just using that little trick for stopping and starting okay so I'm going to keep on quilting and then I'm going to come back and show you how to do the echo quilting So the next step is, once we've um, outlined quilted everything, we're now going to echo quilt it. So echo quilting is when you stitch an even distance all the way around the outside edge of the shapes. So when we do our flower and stem, we're going to do that all in one go. And then we're going to do an echo quilt going all the way around the edge of the bird. Like you can see there, we're going to do each star individually. And then we're going to do our group of stars over here also. So echo quilting is basically just stitching an even distance all the way around the edge of each shape. So I'm doing about a quarter of an inch gap there. Um, I like to say like if you're using a walking foot, like a narrow one like that, all you have to do is just rest the edge of the foot on the edge of the shape and that's going to give you a nice evenly spaced distance. Um, I find that the Benina walking foot's a little bit wider and I say it's probably a good idea with that to move your needle position all the way over to the left, put the edge of the foot on the edge of the applique and then stitching around like that. Other walking feet will have a um, little grid on the front with a guide. So with my walking foot that I've got on here, I've got some guides here. So that little red mark there, this one, is actually going to be um, my quarter inch guide. So I'm just going to echo quilt around one star just to show you how it works. So same thing again. When we go to stitch this, I'm going to start about here. I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to bring the thread up to the top. So um, if you've got a needle up down button that's the best way to bring the thread up. If not, just turning the wheel so that your needle goes all the way down and then all the way back up again. There's our thread there. Okay, and then we're going to start with the needle down and then we're going to put our stitch length on to four, which it's already on. Bring the threads behind the foot and just holding them firmly when you start. So we're doing one, two, three, four, five, six small stitches. And then we're going to put it back up to a stitch length of three. So we're stitching around the edge like 
this I'm just kind of using my little guide there to make sure that I'm showing sewing that even distance around the edge whoops need to go a little bit further so you'll find that sometimes when you get to a corner it's a little bit about guesstimating that corner there okay now I'm coming back in here be surprised with points so you've got to you you're going a little bit further than what you actually think you need to you can see that's starting to look really nice already threads off right now so it's just going to make it a little bit easier for me when I get to there and then aiming to finish exactly there and then I'm just going to bring my stitch length down there to my point so 0 0.6 and then finishing one two three four five six stitches and we'll bring that out so we can have a look and see how lovely that looks so there's our echo quilting and as I mentioned that's what we're going to do around the edge of all the shapes so we're going to do the flower and the stem in one piece and then one big echo quilt all the way around the edge Okay, so I've almost finished the quilting. I've just echo quilted around the edge of the flower and the stem. And I'm just going to finish off now and show you how to do some free motion work. Now this is an advanced technique. So um, if you're a beginner, it's something that you really do want to practice before you actually do on your quilt. If you don't want to do this on your quilt, it is optional. So you could either um, stitch that by hand. You might want to do a little stem stitch there, or you could um, even just stitch that with your machine. Just follow it around with your walking foot nice and slowly. The other thing I'm going to show you is are these extra little stars that we've done here. And I've done those free motion, but you could actually do those just um, straight stitching using your walking foot. Okay, so to do these little things here with free motion, what you're going to need is you're going to need your free motion foot. I've got one with an open toe foot on there. They all look different with all the different machines, if you can see that there. They normally, it's the normally the foot with that's got the spring on it. And you need to drop your feed dogs and, um, and pretty much away you go. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take a little bit of creative license um, and change the stems. Oh, I think we've got these stamens that come out. So I'm going to make mine a little bit sort of bigger like that. And I'm very, very lightly marking them on because I'm probably going to rub that off in a minute. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you always have the foot down, I'm going to bring the bobbin thread up to the top, so needle down, needle up, as I said if you don't have that function there you're turning the wheel so the needle goes all the way down and all the way back up again, I'm bringing my bobbin thread up, so I've got a pink thread on the top and I'm just sticking with my um, pink bobbin thread there, okay so my first stitch is just going to go straight in like that and to start off with I'm just going to do a couple of small stitches um, something that does make this a little bit easier is you can put some quilting gloves on with the rubber grips on it I'm not going to do that I'm just doing a small little bit here so we're going to do a couple of stitches close together now what happens is when you drop the feed dogs on your sewing machine you're in charge of moving the fabric so what I'm going to do is come up like this and around and I'm going to come back again now, those lines don't have to be on top of each other. I quite like it when they're um, a little bit separated there. And then I'm just going to continue, just kind of very, very oh, carefully move across the top of my flower there like that. When I get to my next stamen, I'm going to stop. Now, making a hand frame, so you have this nice square frame there and moving your work. That means that you're never going to stitch through your fingers. 
around like that and back again like that. To finish off you just kind of do some small stitches in the one spot and then I'm just going to cut those threads off. I'm going to use my thread cutters for a little bit naughty. Just cut that off like that. There we are. So that's our nice little stamens there. Just cut that thread off there like that. Okay, now when it comes to the little stars around the outside edge, we want to put those on because with our quilting, um, we've got the outline quilting, we've got the echo quilting, we're going to have the extra little work there with the stamens on the flowers. So that's holding everything down nicely, but we do need to hold things down just a little bit more. I'm just going to move the pins now so that I can mark the little stars around the outside edge. And this is a great tip for any quilt that you're making. Sometimes you've done a quilt and you've just got a few little puffy pieces. And so just to hold that down, I'm just going to uh, mark across here. Now, one of the most important things is to make sure that um, you're staying two inches in from the edge, because don't forget we're going to do some trimming on this. We're going to trim half an inch off the edge there. So I'm going to mark across there. I'm going to mark across here, just really lightly. And then I'm also going to mark another one here, like that. Okay, so to stitch that, what I'm going to do, I'll do this one um, close to the edge here first of all. I'm going to first of all put my foot down, I'm going to bring the bobbin thread up to the top because I cut the thread, that's really tiny now, but I should be able to put that through. There we are. Okay, just lifting the foot for a minute. I like to have a little bit of thread there to hang on to. And then I'm going to put my foot down. And I'm going to just drop my needle back in the same spot there and do a couple of stitches just to secure it like that. Okay, I'm not going to cut those threads just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew forward and then I'm going to sew back and then I'm going to sew forward. Once I get to there, that's when I do like to get my scissors and cut the thread. what you can do is you can um, turn your work and then I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to go forward, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go forward, stopping, and then I'm going to turn. So I'm on a diagonal now, and same thing, forward, back, forward, and then the same thing here. little star so you can see that's going to look quite pretty when I've got those kind of sprinkled around if you feel that there's any extra places that you want to hold the um, three layers down you can do more of those now that is an advanced technique um, but it is something that beginners can do because you're just working free motion but just going straight so all you have to do is um, get yourself some little layers quilt sandwiches I call them so you've got your three layers there um, have them, you know, sitting by your sewing machine and whenever you want to practice just have a little bit of fun Pop on your free motion foot and have a little bit of fun with that um, And if you didn't want to do it like that just have your walking foot on and sew backwards then sew forwards So just doing that backwards and forwards using your walking foot So that's the end of lesson one. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I need to get back into my quilting now. See ya!